this is just fun to do. It's not about trying to have, for me, it's something that's really accurate. It's more about capturing just the spirit of being here. Um, so this is the, the little fountain area that I, there was a bench to sit on, so that's how I actually selected this because there's so many things that you could actually paint. You could move around on this bench and have a lot to paint without ever changing seats. But I go ahead and get something light like this sketched in. Um, and then go ahead and apply my color and I'll do that next and once the color dries then I come back in and strengthen or redraw lines that I think maybe you know I've put it in the area and I'm thinking I don't know if I will like it that way or does it need more emphasis uh, and that's the chance to go back in and kind of have a second pass at it so uh, I've already got my watercolors laid out and I'm using my little um, Winsor & Newton cotton and box and I've added some colors to it uh, it comes with like white which I never use so I've popped it out and I've got some different colors in here like magentas and permanent rose and um, don't even remember some of them more like the Caribbean blue that I use in my oil but I play with the colors in here as well just like I do in my oils till I find things that um, I think lend themselves to the look that I'm wanting to capture with the watercolor and I've also brought along my twinks and the twinks they really are strictly just for me just for fun because they kind of have to be in the sunlight to really show that glitter they have mica in them but they're fun to throw in at the end of the uh, watercolor piece just to see what you get with it just for your own personal enjoyment which is really what uh, for me the watercolor journaling is all about um, you know I share them because people are curious to see a lot of times when I teach but the biggest part for me is just the fun of doing it um, and on this this is actually my journal that I brought from Italy and it has got already a few pieces that I've done since I've been over here um, and it's you can do either a single page or you can do, in this case, I decided to cover both pages this way. So it just depends on how much time you have and how much uh, you're in the mood to watercolor as to how big a page you can use. So go ahead and pop my water out here. And I, did, I carry a little spray bottle to go ahead and mix the watercolors too. It helps them to work up a little bit better. Um, because they are the dry blocks and when they sit it takes a little bit to get your uh, the colors lifting sometimes the way you would like to out of the pans themselves without just messing with the brush too much. And I also have little tissues for me for blotting if I would need it. Um, but a lot of times I start out just putting in clear water so that I can float pigment back into it and get a soft edge instead of it being um, too hard edge because that's one of the things with watercolor paper. Uh, the pigment travels where the paper is wet, so if you want a soft edge, you can go ahead and cover a large area and then put the pigment in a portion of it and let it kind of feather out to the edge of the, uh, where the paper is wet. I'm going to get starting with the sky area up here, just to float some really light colors into it. So right now, it's just clear water going on. With watercolor, you do work from light to dark. And it always, watercolors always dry lighter. Uh, they look one way going on, and when they, as they dry, they tend to dry lighter than you think. They are going to, but you can anticipate that. But I really don't want a uh, strong color in my sky, so. And I just kind of start bopping through here to see what I want to paint next, hanging on the edges. This is a little, uh, tile roof building sticking out in the background here. I'll go ahead and put some of that on. Put a little bit of that same color that I put in the sky. It's always kind of nice to pull colors that you're using in one area into another. It kind of helps pull the piece together. There are market umbrellas back here, which I will leave as the white of the paper. Uh, we've got some really splashy geranium colors in here. Um, right in this area, and they really are popping because they're surrounded with all the neutrals that are in um, the building here, and so I'm going to go ahead and lay those in um, just to see where they're going to be in relationship to everything else because they're such an important part. They're actually kind of what drew me to want to actually do the watercolors on this particular because there's so much in this little village here uh, to choose from. And there's a nice range of colors in the geranium. Some are the warm orange tomato reds, and then some of them are the cool pink purple, so they really complement each other nicely. They play well together. And you see, I'm using a wide brush, but I'm just using the corner of it, which allows me 
to just use one brush to do the work for it. Don't necessarily have to change brushes. You can, but you can get a lot accomplished with just one brush. It has a good edge on it, and then you can use the corner of it to put in the small strokes if you want. Well, sometimes, as it happens when you're out painting, you get rained out, which is what happened here. We actually have some little... It added, I think, to the watercolor, which is fun. Uh, I sat and worked a little bit. I was optimistic that it was going to stop, but it didn't. So we're back, and I'm going to go ahead and finish with some of the lines and stuff that I like to go in and strengthen areas with to kind of, as I said earlier, sometimes restate. Uh, but sometimes I just want to put more darks in there, and the pen is a great way to do that as well. But what I did do, thanks to technology, is I took a quick snapshot from the seat where I was sitting. I think I hear Loki. Uh, <laughs> kitty visit. I took a quick snapshot uh, from the viewpoint that I was sitting at so that I could have a little reference when I get back um, to go ahead and strengthen some of the things that I want to in the piece. So one of the areas that I knew that I wanted to go in was to provide a little bit more definition of shape around where the geraniums were up in this little box that was sitting on the side of the statue. So I'm going to do that. And I like using the pen in, almost in a calligraphy kind of style. Uh, not trying to necessarily be so true to the shapes uh, that are there, but just more the free spirit of the pen. So since the fountain is really my most important part to me of this, the scene that I did here, that's what I'm going to go back in and darken and redefine edges, shapes and values on it. I can still, even if I wanted to, go back in and put more additional watercolor on it. Uh, I will use my twinks towards the end of this because, as I said, those are just, uh, for me, it's kind of a fun thing to go ahead and splash those in at the very end of the piece. Uh, I'm going to define a little bit of the greenery back here. Not a lot because this is in the back area and I'm really not wanting to give it a lot of information. A little on the roof situation there. will be the splashes of water coming down through there. These were actually, I think, like a fish head on the side here. I didn't give him a whole lot of information, but I did capture some of the water coming out into the fountain. This is actually the marker that I'm using. It's a little bit fatter. It's a .05 than the one that I started out with. If you use a smaller fine point, then it allows you to go ahead and do your preliminary sketch in ink, but you feel less committed because it's not making as heavy a line when you're using it. So I do suggest, uh, you know, have you, I usually use like a 0 .01, 0 .03, and 0 .05 sizes in uh, the markers, and it allows me flexibility in how dark I want the line to be when I'm laying it in uh, and going back in and then redefining. And I'm going to make the base that was the orange kind of situated on top of this, I'm going to make it pretty dark because it was uh, it was outlined against the sky, silhouetted, and so I'm going to make it pretty dominant on the top there as well. We'll do one more thing before we get into that. I want to, this is in the village where this was done, and I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it. Being from Paris, Kentucky, it doesn't always work out with the French words, but it is in France. I'll go ahead and sign it, even though it's in my journal. I like to sign a lot of times the larger pieces and then go ahead and put the date. Um, at least the month, if not the day. And now I'm going to put just a little bit of the twinks. This is the last part, and this is the kind of the fun, happy slapdash part with the twinks because we're not trying to stay in anything specific with it. Um, and my twinks, as you see, I've got here, I've just, they come like little pots of eyeshadow, and I've got this little box uh, that at a craft store to go ahead and be able to travel with all of them, and when I super glue them to the bottom uh, of the container so that they travel with me uh, without me having to cake all the lids off and on whenever I'm out, because it's not really convenient for traveling. It's a fun color. The golds are pretty nice also on the stoneware like this. And you can see how loose and kind of sloppy I am with this because I'm not trying to cover the whole piece. I'm just basically wanting to throw some of these 
H2O twinkling watercolors on here. They have mica in them, and that's what provides the sparkle. When you get them in uh, sunlight, you will see just a little bit of glitter with it, and it just kind of makes it um, a fun, happy piece. A little bit of the greens down in through there. And then just, I'm going to throw a little bit on the sky, and we will be done. And the rain has followed us. It's actually trying to sprinkle here too. So anyway, that's the finished piece. And you can paint no matter whether it's raining or not. You just grab you a shot, get it started, and then you can finish up when you're back in somewhere that it's dry. Mm -hmm.